Jojo team yet. Capcom Street Fighter 2. No way! Wait. There's Guile, Ryu, Sangi, Wanka, yeah. and Dalsim. What's the Dalsim? Welcome back to Retro Wednesday. It's Todd Jeremy Hanger. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about the Street Fighter 2 and the Street Fighter the movie G.I. Joe figures subset sub lines that they made. Now I went after these figures, tried to get one of each character. I bought them in lots and I pieced together a bit of a collection with very little spillover doubles. It's magic that it happened. Now I did not go after the accessories. I have a handful. I don't even know who they go to. I don't even care. They came with a ton of different accessories that I'm not going to look at. But the reason I even went after this is because I absolutely love Street Fighter. Street Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo was my favorite game on the Super Nintendo. It was when it came out. It still is today. If I were to pick one game for the Super Nintendo, it would be Street Fighter 2. And these figures, most of them are very good representations. Even though we're going to be seeing a lot of really stellar representations in the 1 6th, 1 12th scale, 6 inch figures coming out in the future. Looking back at the past in 1993 and 1994, we're going to take a look at G.I. Joe Street Fighter coming up. All right, so first on the list is Balrog, and this is an obvious reuse of the mold for Big Boa and a different head sculpt. As you can see, the bodies are pretty much the same and they use the same boxing gloves. Now the difference is there's no Cobra symbol on the boxing gloves unless you can't find these boxing gloves you gotta kinda get a repurposed one or whatever. But anyway, still works pretty good. Uh, has, it's a pretty good reuse, a recolor. I remember the first time going up against this guy in the game, it was crazy. And I was thinking, how am I gonna beat this guy? He just boxes and that's all he does. But he does box and he gets the job done. Now he does come with a bunch of crazy accessories that are unnecessary, like most of these, but he does have the boxing gloves, which is really good, really pertinent, and it actually works. One of the few figures that comes with something that will actually work for them. And using the big boa body was just brilliant and it works out very well and just repaint it. Uh, great figure, Balrog. Next up we're talking about Blanca. Blanca is uh, got two different molds to him, two versions. This is the one I like the most because he's green is what I think about in there. This one's more of a teal and a turquoise and so has, I think, the battle-matic kind of action. He does this. So the later ones started having some function in him. Now his legs are permanently like this, but it kind of matches the whole look of the, the video game. So but it was actually this, I think, is the movie version. Anyhow, still, I think this one looks really good. Now, this one is the one that is based on the road pick design. If you kind of look, the torsos are the same. They still have they still have the same waist piece, apparently. Uh, you even have the utility belt with arrows right here, and then the shin guards, and, and then the way they did the paint apps make it look so much different. Almost like you can't tell it's the same body. It's the same body, but still really cool. Blanco is one of my favorites in here. There's also the Funko Savage World version of Blanca. And I don't I think they only made four of these. I'm not 100% sure. Got this thing on sale today. But it's interesting because seeing this, you see like the little hair patch, and they added a little fuzzy, fuzzy hair patch into the second series version. Here they both are from the back. Of course, they've got the crazy orange and red hair, crazy looking hair on it. Still looks really good. I actually think that. The combination of these two, he needs orange hair, and this guy, uh, well, this guy actually is a pretty good Blanca, but I don't like the green that they use. Anyhow, Blanca. So next up we have E Honda or Edmund Honda, and there are two versions. I only have one version, so I'm really only concerning myself with the one version here. But he has an action feature, which I think is a downside for him because it's broken on most of them, and it makes his leg go forward. It's a kick. And so with that, uh, you have problems. Problems making them stand. So most of them look like this. So uh, I, when I first got them, I was able to, I've had them standing for a long time and then I try to get the action feature to work and now I can't get them standing again. So it's very easily broken <laughs> this day and age, but he does fit the character very, very well. I think this is a new mold. I'm pretty sure it's an all new mold and it looks fantastic for the character, but he comes with a, soft skirt and a whole bunch of stupid weapons that make no sense but at the end of the day 
uh, they had to pack in a ton of weapons with these figures. I think they wanted to give you value for your repack and recolored figures, but this guy was a new one, I believe, and looks a lot like the character. And he would kind of do sort of this in the game. So you can get him in that, that, that pose right there. Next up we have Zangief, the Russian wrestling fighter, and he looks pretty cool uh, overall. And I, I really don't know if they reused him. I mean, it almost looks like it was partially a bat's uh, waist piece and all that stuff. But anyway, I don't know what parts they were used of him, but he does look pretty cool. And when you look at him, yeah, he fits the whole Zangief. So it works pretty well. And I do like the colors and, you know, you have a lot of the flesh tones on this guy and he's in his red and then yellow belt. He's got his necklace, all that kind of stuff. Does have that nice looking mohawk. So overall, pretty good looking figure, pretty good looking character. Overall, works for me. Gets the job done, and I'm not worrying about tracking down his 85 accessories. Here is Dalsum, which he was crazy in the game. He would always do like that slide kick, and that would almost always work on everyone, unless you jumped over it, but pretty cool. The fact that he actually has like a another gimmick, I think it's only in one arm, unless one arm is broken, but yeah, push down. Boom. So, but it looks a lot like the character. So they did a really good job. Again, I don't know if this one is a remold or if this was one of the new ones. I think they only did a couple of new figures and they, they just did uh, recolors of other existing figures for this line. And most of the stuff is just recolors. But I can see why. I mean, it was, they anticipated it not being as popular as maybe a mainline Joe. And I can see why. But this guy looks cool. And he's got his little necklace with some heads on it there, some skulls and stuff. And... Dalsum works, fits the character very well. There he goes, Dalsum. Next up we got Segat, and this guy is pretty cool. Uh, I didn't say Sega, Segat. But, so this one, I remember he was hard to beat in the game, and then after a while, you got used to him. Now his arms do this moving function where it's like an alternate arm moving function. I guess either one makes it happen. So I'm real careful with these because I think this kind of stuff breaks real easy. Uh, he's got a huge, huge, like he's been doing some shoulder shrugs with like 100 pounds on each arm or something. So he's, he's really building those up. That's kind of hard to do too, so I'm really impressed. Uh, there he is from the back, but it fits the character. Again, another one that fits the character very well. And when I first started collecting these, I was thinking, these don't look so much like Street Fighter figures, but the more I collect them, I started picking up gems like this, and they really fit the character, and it really works. So, really awesome figure. Really good representation of Sigat. Next up, we've got Vega. Now, Vega is one that I would think would come with an accessory that could work, that that three-pronged knife that he put on his wrist would have worked really well with this guy, but he didn't come with it. He came with a bunch of gold accessories that made no sense. It looked like the ones on his chest. So with that, I would have loved to have seen when I think they made another version that did actually come with something, but I might have been wrong. Now, there is a, a figure that out there they made for G.I. Joe that actually has that, and I have that part somewhere, but uh, when I do locate it, I'm going to go ahead and put it on this guy, but... Still, overall, a very good representation, I still believe. And I don't know who they reused this from, because I think this is a 90s figure that they reused it from. But anyhow, uh, the head has kind of a soft uh, plastic ponytail over here. And he does, I don't think he has any action feature, or if he did, it's broken now. So maybe he did, but it broke. Anyhow, his face, though, that's the big part of this character. He has a very distinguishing face. So that looks pretty good too. And he works really well. I mean, he's, he definitely looks the part for Vega and that character in Street Fighter. Good job. Next on the list is M. Bison. M. Bison is, of course, the main bad guy, the main villain. And the thing about it is that there are like five different variations of this guy. As you can see right here, I have two variations, which are pretty much the exact same figure, just with different paint schemes and different paint decos and so with that uh, I think the red one of course is the one I like the most because that's what I remember from the game so with it I think that this is a better figure now neither of these have capes but uh, there is another version that's red with a cape and that one has a red or a black cape and then there is an all black version that has a black cape and then there's another one that's from a two-pack so the black version was from the shadow 
Lou playset. So all of this stuff, though, I think this one really fits the bill. It works really well. Of course, if he had a cape on him, that would have been nice. I don't know how those capes attach anyway, if you could even swap them out. But uh, M. Bison fits the bill. Looks a little kind of weak, though. I would have liked him a little beefier because he was pretty beefy in the game. So I think that would be the downside of this figure. But overall, looks pretty good. So next we're talking about Guile, and these are based on the video game, the Street Fighter 2, I believe the Street Fighter 2 version, but it does get a little bit confusing because there's so many with the, based off the movie that aren't really matching the movie so well. But anyway, there's two different color variations that I have here. I'm sure there's more color variations, but there are a lot of Guile variations, and I'm going to show you one right after this that I have. And so with this, they both have this giant flat top, but one of them is painted in brown, one's got green and camo. This one is the one I think looks more like the uh, cartoon, the, not cartoon, the video game and uh, maybe the movie. I don't really remember watching the movie so much. So my whole goal in collecting, and this guy doesn't want to stand, my whole goal in collecting is to match the video game. And so with that, this one does work out. So this particular version, this particular one, looks like the video game to me, or close enough, and it reminds me of it. I just don't remember the hair being so big. It's just crazy. That's a crazy matter. You could probably do a reverse hand headstand. I was right, that flat top works very well for a, a handstand or a headstand. Works extremely well, but I was trying to put it on top of here. There's a slight bow to each one of them, so that didn't work. I thought it was super flat. But still, really cool figure, really cool character. Let's see the other version. So this one is Sonic Boom. Now, I would think this day and age, we would just get action uh, features like some add-ons that would look like the Sonic Boom instead of a bunch of worthless reused accessories. But anyhow, he has the action feature because he is a later one that was for the movie. And he looks okay. He looks a lot like the movie, uh, I guess, because I never really remember watching it. But I believe it was Jean-Claude Van Damme that was in it, so maybe that's uh, that doesn't look like they were going for him either. Just generic guile. But he does look the part with the uh, camo down here, kind of a black tank top, and all that kind of stuff. And so, a nice looking figure overall, but when I look at him, I don't automatically think guile. Uh, but the other ones, well, at least the one with the green, I think guile right away. So, those still win even without the crazy useless action feature. All right, so we've got Chun-Li. Chun-Li here. Chun-Li looks okay. I don't think she's the greatest representation of the character. I think they could have done a lot better. There are some figures coming out these days that look so much better than what they were doing with female characters back in the day. But when I look at her, mixed in with all my Street Fighters, uh, she gets the job done. Now, she does look okay with like all of the, the paint. There's quite a few paint apps. It is super neon bright. But, uh, yeah, she's a little bit too neon for me. But she does do one thing. Uh, she does, if you pull the leg back, kick. I wonder if both of them do it. Nope, just this one. So, uh, And it really, this is a good action feature because it doesn't affect her ability to stand. And not really so much affecting posability. But it does sort of affect posability because you only have forward and backward so you can't get a wide stance. But as long as she can stand okay, you can get her in a couple of different poses. Yeah, Venable Knees would have helped for this look. And when her arm was doing that flailing thing, a flailing thing, and her leg does the flailing thing. And actually, she kicks sideways, not forward in the game. So I guess there's a lot of things wrong with this figure. But overall, it works, I guess. I knew there was something with this Chun-Li. I, I, I want to show they reuse Chun-Li's body for some neon version of scarlet down the road so is that scarlet yeah and so she has like a like a rooted hair in there but starting to look at this they look so different because of the paint apps like instead of it looks like she's wearing all blue but she's got some bare chest showing but it's still the same mold same design both have these shoulder pads and the and that kind of stuff so all that works pretty well and it, it blends in. Even the shoulder here blends in really well. So, yeah, that's... I ended up picking her up thinking she was a Street Fighter figure. Nope, she was just a remold of a Street Fighter figure. So here's Ryu. I think Ryu and Ken were probably two of the most popular figures. Uh, he is one of the harder ones to get, but uh, mine's got a little bit of yellowing on him. I, I do like that there is this cloth on it. It just feels a little bit more premium, and some of these are missing this cloth piece. Now, this is one... I don't know if you can... 
uh, take it apart. You just can't take these apart so well. So putting that cloth piece in if you don't have one or just trying to fix it and put it in, that might be harder than it looks. But uh, he does have the arm moving gimmick. So uh, and it only goes from take it back to forward. You can take it a click. And then this arm doesn't have anything. The legs don't have anything. And from the back. And I don't know if he's a reuse from another figure. It just it almost looks like a Storm Shadow, but it doesn't look like Storm Shadow's body. But still, a pretty cool looking figure overall. Ryu is probably, I don't know if he's the most popular. Ken's the most popular. Blanca, Guile. I mean, maybe Guile is the most popular. Uh, M. Bison. But yeah, probably one of the more sought after ones out there. Ryu. Now, Ken looks a little bit different, and the name for Ken is, a, is, is a little, when I looked it up, it says Ken Masters, and I want to put side by side because it always feels like when you have Ryu and Ken anything that you just get the same thing, which is different colors. These are completely different, so I don't know what his body was reused from before, uh, but I'm sure somebody would be able to tell me. Oh, and he has this nice little feature here. The good and bad point, well, the bad point is you can't get the arms the same, so he's always going to be in some sort of pose. Now, I have him on the stand because he's kind of a floppy mess, and I know how to fix that with some polish and all that kind of stuff. That's not hard to do. He also comes with the same little strap on the side, but it's a different figure all around, so it is not the same figure, and I will need to fix all of these, uh, these looseness issues in this guy. Probably right after I make this video. I know how to fix it, but why have I not ever done that? That makes no sense. But anyway, this is Ken Masters, and he looks pretty good. I don't really know what his weapons are. Again, I don't care. But I think that he might have come with swords. I think Ryu came with swords. But he works. I just think the face looks so old. Way older than what I consider Ryu and Ken to be. Uh, or, you know, Ken Masters to be. But uh, So that's a disappointment. I think the Ryu was a much better figure, and it hit the character much closer. I do want to show these real quick. These are Mortal Kombat figures, and I believe that Raiden and Goro are the new molds, completely new molds made for these characters. I don't know if they were using down the road. That's what I've heard, and uh, I'm not sure this. I think this is uh, Liu Kang. Is this Liu Kang? Liu Kang wins. I, I don't know. I might be wrong on that. I actually didn't research these at all. I just know I had them on the same shelf as my Street Fighters. I'll probably never do a, a Mortal Kombat video simply because I'm not going to go after all of those figures, but I still think that these are some of the cooler looking ones, and I think I just randomly ended up with those, and I went after him because because just look at him. He's really cool. Now, they made about, see, five vehicles. Is it five vehicles for Street Fighter between the two lines? And uh, this is the one I have. And the really cool thing about it is that I didn't even know this thing existed until I started looking into the tricycle for the Dreadnoughts. And then I came across this one, which was pretty good to go. And then I have a bunch of extra missiles for it and all that kind of stuff. I've already reviewed, well, of course, I sort of showed this off. I'm not really reviewing this whole thing today. But I am going to show that it does a couple of cool things different than the tricycle. Now, at first glance, you kind of look at them and say they're just recolors, and that's it. But there are some differences. First of all, you have, instead of just this purple gun here, you actually have a missile launching system that launches missiles cra like crazy. And then with these missiles, they actually have the dog bone connector, so you can connect them to the side here, over here, and that's a different. You don't have that on this. So that's somehow they made a new part. Maybe they added that. I don't know who they how they do this. To the tooling, uh, maybe they can etch out the dog bone piece in, in the existing tooling, and they'll never be able to use this tooling again. So I, I don't know how that works. Now you do notice that the missiles are black here, but red here. The exhaust is red here, and uh, it's actually charcoal. See, it's not the same color. So the exhaust and this here is kind of a charcoal gray, where this is actually a jet black. And then I think that this one, the side pieces here, are also a charcoal looking gray and not a jet black so interesting stuff and how the color variations on this but we're going to see this repeat itself over and over and over in this toy line because well i just don't think they thought they had confidence or that these would sell on their own so they just reused molds okay so we got the street stalker 
and that is a remold recolor of the stinger vehicle which looks pretty cool overall and you know this is the time of neon colors this thing looks really cool it looks pretty good trying to track one of these down is actually kind of hard i was trying to find one on ebay i didn't even see one on ebay so uh i'm not going after these vehicles but it's still kind of fun to see what they sell for or how expensive they are and that's kind of stuff so uh, with that that's the street uh, stalker that looks pretty cool uh the devastator now that thing is a re color of the snowcat and it did kind of do a few things a little bit different it has like a missile launcher on top and the missiles stow away in the same sort of configuration that we have with the original snowcat and all of that kind of stuff and then they stay extra ones still on the side but it seems like that thing needs more missiles than they give you these just don't have enough missiles to fill up those launchers and have your side full it's either you leave your launchers partially empty but still it's a pretty cool item overall Next is what I think is the coolest of all the vehicles that they made, aside from, of course, the uh, Karate Chopper, I've got that. But it's the Beast Blaster, which is a recolor of the Thunder Machine, which is a cool-looking vehicle, and they did do some changes to that one. Uh, most notably, it would be the missile launcher in the very front versus just having the twin machine gun cannons so that thing does look awesome just notice all the different parts are different colors and that kind of stuff i actually noticed some of that when i was actually trying to piece together my thunder machine and when i did that i realized well these parts are more expensive than a standard thunder machine and that's because they made less they produced them in lower quantities and they could do that because they already have the mold next up we have the crimson Cruiser. Now, this is the recolor of the Badger. Now, this is the only one that was under the brand of the Street Fighter 2. I think the rest were considered the movie. Now, that's from my research. I, that might be wrong. But this uh, Badger is one of those 90s vehicles. So, they already reused a 90s vehicle from the year before, I believe. And with that, it's one of those vehicles that I don't have any memory of. And there's no fond memory of. So, I am completely disconnected with the Crimson Cruiser and the Badger at the same time but it's got the Street Fighter name on it, so I wanted to throw it out there. Next up, I want to talk about the Shadow Loot Headquarters and the Dragon Fortress. So they did have a couple play sets. So first off, the Shadow Loot Headquarters is a previous mold that they eventually using in 2001, they used on the headquarters, the more updated G.I. Joe headquarters. But the Shadow Loot Headquarters, of course, is its own crazy with uh, purple and a bunch of different colors uh, neon looking headquarters and that thing itself is very interesting so it's one of those things where they started doing a few things where they said we're going to make this and then we're going to use it in the future just like they did with the chun li into a scarlet and those kinds of things next up is the dragon fortress now that is a recolor of the Cobra Toxo Lab that they made the year before. So, again, I don't know what the Cobra Toxo Lab is, and the Dragon Fortress means that to me. It really just looks like a watchtower uh, with a couple of extra additional play features to it. So, it's still kind of cool and kind of neon colors, but uh, I almost don't want to call it a playset. They probably don't even classify it as a playset, but it's an outpost. Anyhow, figured I'd show it. Hope you enjoyed this look at G.I. Joe Street Fighter with a little bit of Mortal Kombat in there, a little bit of play sets, and all of the vehicles and stuff. And this line is a cool line. Well, it's actually a couple of lines and subsets from the G.I. Joe uh, in the 90s, 1993, 1994. Now, I'm curious if any of y'all have these. Have you? Do you have these? Do you chase these down? Are these things that you saw in the past and passed on like I did? And then now kind of look back fondly on them and think, man, I really wish I would have picked some of them up. Anyhow, they're still not super duper expensive on eBay. You can track them down. Pretty simple, more or less. I looked and almost every one of these is readily available. Some cost a little bit more than more expensive ones you don't even see in front of you. But I think I've got a pretty good representation here so you can get an idea. Don't worry about the weapons and accessories unless, of course, that you're that kind of collector. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Teddy your hanger out. Ninja moves! Hey! But Copra's got Street Fighters too! Vega! Sagat! Balrog! And me, Air Hey, look! Unbeatable! Here come Street Fighter 2 figures he sold separately! Oh, I like them!